In a world where shadows hide behind the silver screen, one team dares to reveal the secrets. Dive deep with paranoid American Tommy Truthful and the rest of the Truth Mafia as they decode the hidden messages in movies we thought we knew. From ancient myths to modern politics, from gematria to the darkest corners of the occult, prepare to see cinema in a whole new light. Welcome to Conspiracy Cinema. Welcome, my brothers and sisters. This is called Fair Use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. This episode today is made possible through our sponsors, Body Align, the Energy Wellness. That link is down in the description. You'll see sponsors. Just click on the link. So we got an amazing episode for you today, guys. We're going to get into the newest episode or the newest movie of the hunger games the ballad of the songbird and snakes um so the hunger games the ballad of the songbird and snakes is a 2023 prequel to the hunger Games series based on susan collins 2020 novel the film set 64 years before the original and explores the early days of the hunger games and the rise to power of Snow, the president. The narrative shifts from the rudimentary Hunger Games to Snow's evolution from privileged young man to the manipulative fig figure he becomes. Now, the film's third chapter, The Peacekeeper, marks a significant departure in tone and setting moving from the capital to the forest. This shift allows for a deeper exploration of the characters and their relationship particularly between Snow and Lucy Gray, the star of the movie, revealing the depths of Snow's dark side and Lucy Gray's cunning use of charm. The film's cine cinematography and design invokes a sense of both romance, danger, and contributing to its suspenseful narrative. There's a lot of occult symbolism and elements in the sh show as well. We got the snake symbolism, um, the tributes in the cage at the abandoned zoo. This scene where tributes are brought to the capital and placed in a cage with little substance, no food, no water, symbolize the dehumanization and objectification of the districts. You know, the people that are put in these 12 districts, um, kind of like how they're going to have the FEMA zone set up, the 10 FEMA zones. It's very similar to that. And the capital citizens um, are, are outside of the zoo looking in on these people from the districts, you know, which represent the lower class of, of society. Then there's this scene. It's the crucifixion imagery. And this part is crazy. It's taking place during the actual Hunger Games part of it. Um, the crucifixion-like imagery, a disturbing moment occurs when a tribute thought to be dead is discovered in a crucifixion-like position. Now, they go up and, you know, kill him with an axe to beheading, and we're in the ember months. This comes out during the ember months, September, October, November, December. The ember, if you've ever looked at my ember decodes, the video me and Donut Factory did on this, it's connected to decapitation right so in this scene she's kind of taking pity on him and chops his head now he got away there was like an explosion the day before the games and this is where um he took off out the door he was the one that got caught a couple of them got shot they didn't make it out but um yeah that's how he was punished after it now Paranoid American and my boy Jay Dreams are here with me today. How you guys doing today? We're doing great, good, man. Good. <laughs> I was waiting for Jay. What's up, guys? <laughs> How you doing, brother? So, um, Paranoid, who were some of the people that starred in this movie? Do you remember? Uh, well, no, I had to look it up, though. I got in front of me because I hadn't heard of pretty much anyone, and I feel like I mean, like a little bit of like a reboot, like it was all new characters that 
um, haven't been in a lot of movies before, I guess. So the main one was Lucy Gray Baird, and that was Rachel Ziegler. So that's that's the chick that was singing, right? That's the musical Disney princess that that Jay was saying earlier. And then Tom Blythe is the guy that plays Snow, like a young Snow. And then you've got um, Viola Davis is the black lady that basically is kind of like running the show for uh, a, a large portion of it. You got Peter Dinklage is in it just to kind of pass the torch on to Snow as like a prequel. And then uh, Hunter Schaefer from Euphoria is in it. And they put they put Hunter Schaefer in a whole bunch of the promo for this stuff, but they didn't really have a lot of role in this. I think it was the person that ended up like killing that dude you just showed. Uh, that was like strung up. I think that was Hunter Shaper. Oh yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Of course, they had to have a crucifixion moment in it, right? As we're in the, we're we're wanting into the, the the whole winter solstice, and um, yeah, it blew my mind. This came out, guys, on November seventeenth too, which is the day that Carter's uh, President Carter's wife, Rosalind Carter, went into hospice. And then she died two days later on the 19th. And so December 17th in a non-leap year, I believe, is the 322nd day of the year. And then in a leap year, it's November 18th, 322nd day of the year. So go figure that it comes out on that day with all the symbolism behind it with the with the serpents. Yeah, it was pretty uh, crazy. So what, what did you think of the movie, uh, Jay? <clears throat> uh it was interesting um you know lots of symbolism yeah he wasn't really i didn't like it <laughs> i know you didn't i'm kind of with you on that i, I didn't think it was a good <laughs> movie as far I, as like movie. I like this i like all the symbolism that was you know going on yeah i thought it was cool but and i i guess it, there wasn't a lot of action like the normal hunger games and in and, and the stadium did suck i mean it was terrible Usually, if you look at the old ones, I mean, it was set up so elaborately, right? And then this one was kind of a letdown. It's just like in an arena. And well, well, because the, the other ones were like most dangerous game, right? Everyone runs out and you've got like this big RPG, like free roam world. You know what I mean? And then this movie, all of a sudden, you don't have a free roam world anymore. You got like one little room that everything kind of happens in. Yeah. Um, like the whole bat, like, like it's the inverse, like the whole movie is about everything, but yeah. the actual games, even though it's called hunger games, it's a, it, they should have been called it like everything right before and everything after the hunger games. <laughs> yeah, that is true. It, and it was the 10th annual. So like I said, it was set 64 years before the original that we've seen, right? And 64, guys, just to let you know, is a huge number with the nobility. There's 64 spaces on a chessboard. The newest royal family member, little baby Lilibet, was born on 64, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and What's her name, Lilibet? Little bit. That was um. That was the queen's nickname. Now I got a whole theory with that, bro. I think that baby, honestly, between me and you, I think that baby was born just so the queen could transfer her consciousness into it. I really believe that with all my heart. I don't care about that baby. You can say whatever you want about it. I mean, that's just what I think about. That's just what I think happened, honestly. Um, you got people like uh, what's his name? Kissinger. I don't think he passed away either. I think these people are uploading their consciousness, honestly. And we just talked about that with that series. I paranoid recommended to me. What was it called again, bro? Pantheon. Pantheon, guys. Uh, I'll get into it. I got a breakdown for it. It's it's so amazing. Um, it's like a cartoon series that came out on, I believe, Paramount AMC or something like that. But uh came out in 2022, and it's all about uploading your consciousness. You know, and that's what these elites have been doing for not just 100 years. They've been doing this for thousands of years. Their technology is so far advanced beyond anything we can even fathom. They've been doing it since the Egyptian times and before that, transferring one's consciousness, just like in X-Men. Remember, remember that dude that came back in X-Men that was like the god and, and he was in the Egyptian pyramid and transferred his consciousness into the pharaoh? Uh, apoc apocalypse, right? 
Yes, X Men Apocalypse. That was a great one. Yeah, so well, was, that's the guy's name. I think is is Apocalypse. Yes, and he was. They said he said my name's been many different names. Elohim. They called him many different gods. It's in the like Bible. the dude from the Farius. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so they've been transferring consciousness for a long time. They show us that symbolism in so many uh, movies. Now, with this one, I will say this. There is a ton of symbols. A ton. When in, in the first scene, instantly, um, you have um, all the kids from the Capitol, right? And this is future President Snow. For any of you that know the Hunger Games, he's the future president. Um, the, the kid with the blonde hair there. And they're sitting in here getting ready. They think they're going to win this prize, but they end up having to have a tribute this year. It's something new that they're adding, right? So each one of these upper-class children are getting a tribute from the district that they have to sponsor. And that's going to determine whether they get this sponsorship to go on. It's kind of like a college type thing. But in this scene, guys, I mean, look at the symbolism. You got the Masonic compass right up there on the wall, right? And that's the symbol of the school. Each kid has that little pin on their chest, this Masonic compass symbol. And then next to it, you have the nuclear symbol. It's, it's supposed to be a phoenix, but it is clearly a nuclear symbol. And then when I started decoding it, it really cemented it for me because, you know me, guys, I always look at the gematria which comes from Jewish Kabbalah mysticism going back to Babylon. The elites have a secret hidden language of symbols and numbers. So using the purest and oldest cipher in Chaldean, the ballad of the songbirds and snakes is 92, matching order of the Illuminati, 47th president, and he's the president president snow we're getting ready for the 47th president i believe it'll be donald trump um and get ready for world currency is 92 and that's really what this is all about the new world order putting us in districts and then fema zones uh flipping us to a digital currency martial law you know all that element 92 is uranium which has the nuclear symbol so whenever you're decoding you use your Chaldean cipher for your um, element number, right? So whatever it equals in Chaldean, you go look at, well, what elements connected to that? And it will give you, you know, in this case, uranium. Um, and then the atomic weight of that element is 238. Well, that you're going to use either English ordinal or Latin to see the connection there, Um and in 238 from the earth to the moon is 238,000 miles. And where do we have 238 connected to a president, guys? JFK. JFK was taken out and Lyndon Johnson was sworn in on Air Force One at 2.38 p.m. So we, we have a 238 connection to a president. And then Trump inauguration is 238. And I believe Trump will be taken out. After he becomes president, they're going to take him out, just like they showed us in The Simpsons. That's a form of lesser magic, predictive programming, truth in plain sight, um, to really get the people that worship Trump um, out there and irate as they're trying to get us in the streets, create the civil war, so they can declare martial law. You know what I mean? And um, also, if you look at that cipher, uh, 238 United Grand Lodge of England is 238, which is called the Mother Lodge. It was created in 1717. And you have the Freemasonic symbolism right up there. We have the connection to Trump. We have the 47th president in both ciphers. And then the last but not least, Lahaina Fire Ritual Sacrifices 238, guys. And from Lahaina, until this movie came out, was exactly 102 days. Well, 9-11 was the 102 minutes that changed America. 102 is art of war. Flip it around. What is it? 201, like event 201. And then you have 102 years before we went on lockdowns here in America was the Spanish flu. Exactly on the same day, 311, 102 years earlier. So with Maui, 
the 47 degree connection we see with the Masonic compass, the 47th president. If you remember during Maui, the famous banyan tree, the largest in the U.S. that spans two acres and has 47 trunks was scorched by the fires, remember? So, yeah, there was a lot of crazy connections um, to symbolism in this movie, which I felt, yeah, I thought it was pretty interesting. And if you look at the main symbol, it's serpents, right? So there's a scene at the end where the serpents cover everyone and they send these serpents in to take them out. They, they weren't going to let no one survive. And you'll notice the blue symbolism too, guys, all throughout it. In the beginning, uh, when Lucy Gray is called up to be a tribute from district 12, she has a snake in her hand. So at 13 minutes in, it starts out with her pulling a snake out and putting it in a girl's um, dress that is as has a blue dress on. Right. You remember during Maui, the blue color didn't burn. And then she has blue flowers all over her dress. Lucy Gray does. Now, the snakes ain't biting Lucy and she's singing to them. She thinks it's because of her music that they're not biting her. But these are weaponized military snakes. So what happens is if they have your scent, they won't bite you at all. If they know your scent, they will not bite you. And he finds this out, the dude with the blonde hair that is sponsoring Lucy Gray, this kid here. He realizes that when he goes into uh, the lady that's running the war department, the black lady, she has one blue eye and one normal eye, just like in the changeling, the girl that put the uh, red bracelet on that girl's hand. Remember, she had the one blue eye, the one normal eye. There's something going on with that, too. And I started seeing it after all this fire stuff. But um, he, when he goes in there and sees these snakes for the first time, he's reading a presentation to the doctor and telling her, you know, these things that they should implement in the Hunger Games to get more people to watch. Well, his partner that he allegedly does all the schoolwork with, she tries to take the credit. And the doctor's like, oh, you're the one that wrote that? Uh, presentation. Oh, cool. Well, my uh, person dropped it in the snake tank. Stick your hand in there and grab it for me so we can read your presentation. And she's like, as long as um them snakes, it's, it's, you really wrote it and your scent is on that paper, then you won't be bitten. So the girl reaches in there. Of course, she didn't write it and she's bit, right? She falls out on the floor. So that's when the blonde kid sees that for the first time. And he's like, oh, okay. At the end, when he realizes they're not going to let no one win the Hunger Games, because there was a bunch of um, events that took place uh, that, that they considered terroristic, right? So they're like, we're, we're, we're making sure everyone dies in this Hunger Games. And they release these snakes in there. But they don't bite Lucy. Because before... That kid, he's like falling in love with Lucy now. It's no. So he, the night before that, he goes to the cage at the zoo to see Lucy. And she just saved his life. She says, he says to her, I'm going to get you out of here. She's crying. It's nighttime. And he takes a cloth out of his pocket, wipes her tears, puts it back in his pocket. So now the, the next day when the Hunger Games is going on and they decide to take everyone out with these snakes. He remembers that they wouldn't bite you if they knew your scent. And he looks in his pocket and has that rag right there that he wiped her tears with. So he drops that in the cage. And when they drop this giant cage through the top of the stadium, she doesn't get bit. And that's where they kind of know, oh, something went wrong here. And they find the rag in the, in the serpent cage. And that leads to him getting sent out. They try to send him to District 8. He spends his last little bit of money to get sent to District 12 because he doesn't know if Lucy survived or not. He don't know if she's alive. And um, they send him to the military where he's got to be a grunt for 20 years. Well, Lucy is alive. And that's really where the story really begins. So 
after the Hunger Games, there's like a whole hour left um, where it kind of begins with how snow becomes snow. And um, yeah, that's pretty much the stuff I seen um, in it. What about you, Paranoid? What'd you catch? Uh, so I got a I got a completely different tangent as usual. Okay, of course. So let, me, let me pull mine up. You know, people were messaging me. They're like, "Man, after your last show, you and Paranoid fell out. You guys don't do podcasts no more." Yeah, we <laughs> we had a we had a brawl, bro. We had to go and solve it physically, and it was like blow for blow. We're both <laughs> recovered now. We're yeah. all good. Ain't that funny? I was like, man, we were cool right after that show. <laughs> I just was in the middle of moving, and um, that's all it was. Yeah, we would definitely never fall out. So I'm going to focus almost entirely on this this whole premise right here, basically of the Hunger Games itself, where he's describing, and the, the original premise, for everyone who doesn't know the Hunger Games already, they picked two children from each district, and they put them into, you know, the capital arena. And in this case, again, the arena was like a tiny little sort of um, like foyer almost. They're like a little like Coliseum kind of. But in the other Hunger Games that take place after this one in the future, they take place in like this this big wide open, you know, like forest where they can go and hide and, and like make little shelters and stuff. So it, it's a little bit of a departure from that. But what this is actually describing is the same premise as the the minotaur and the labyrinth so in in minos right and here's the snakes again too so minos um was basically from the 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 story minotaur this is like the bull of minos and the minotaur here we go the the minotaur lived in this labyrinth that was created by daedalus and daedalus basically creates this labyrinth they put the minotaur at the middle and the children of Athens are sent, uh, like it, depending on the story, some say every year, some say every six years, some say every 12 years. Um, but every X number of years, these children from Athens, from like the affluent communities, they would get sent into this labyrinth to go and try and, you know, find the Minotaur. But it was ultimately a version of sacrifice because the kids never came back out. Uh, and, and actually the person that ends up taking the Minotaur out later on is theseus i believe and um and he's the one that actually ends up killing the minotaur and ending this whole entire ritual and this ritual is very likely a reference to like those old carthaginian and phoenician rituals but in this version they just say that they take them into this labyrinth and they give it to this this bull that lives in the center but this is that same exact premise of like bringing your kids to the big bull um, and, and that is like this form of sacrifice that you have to do in order to just like make your way still. And Athens was basically in, in debt to Crete for many years while they were doing all this. Um, and then the whole reason why this bull was even locked away like this and why this labyrinth was created and, and Athens had to send their kids was because this chick right here, uh, and I'm going to butcher the name, Pasiphae. She she basically was the queen of Crete, and her husband finds out that she's got something going on with uh with somebody else and creates this minotaur. So she's actually referred to as the goddess of witchcraft and sorcery. So we're we're literally talking about like magic combining with this two-horned deity that turns into the minotaur at the center of this this labyrinth. Um, and then again, there's the, the picture of the original Minos. And then this right here is is also really crazy. So Talon is the, is a direct connection between the Minotaur that lives inside the labyrinth. There's the concept of like that Carthaginian god that you would also you know bring your sacrifices to, and also Talos. And Talos is a giant automaton made of bronze. So this is like an like an old school huge mech robot, right? That would protect europa from pirates and invaders it was it was legit like a robot sidekick that was like your bodyguard um and this is nuts that this is so old that they were they were writing about this like literally a, a giant automaton um and then here's a picture right and this is on the uh the left i believe Andragius. 
and this is where you get the word androgynous from. Here's androgynous. And androgynous uh, is probably well represented by the um, the Hunter Schaefer character in this movie because Hunter Schaefer is the uh, the androgynous person from um, what is it Euphoria? That I don't know if you guys seen the Euphoria show. Oh yeah, it was but, great. So that so I mean there's there's an interesting connection between the very premise of Hunger Games where you're bringing your kids up to be sacrificed for the greater of the city, which is the exact same story as the Minotaur, Athens and Minotaur. And this entire story, the whole reason that you would even have to do this was entirely because of this queen of magic, um, basically procreating and involving this Minotaur. And then that just dovetailing into almost every other modern story that we've gotten here. There's even some connections. I'm going to, I'll give a little tiny preview of some of my, my deep research from, uh, from Thrill Oxide. I won't say the name. But here's here's an actual dagger that they found in 1979 that that was from this area where they were actually doing these kinds of sacrifices, and it's it's really hard to see on here. But like, is, is right, that from Carthage? Um, and, and this guys, is from Carthage, yes. Real yep. um, real oxide. If you want to know what that means, you I forgot to put the link in the description, but go to occult decode. Dot com. That's Paranoid American's web, one of his websites, occultdecode.com. And there's um, words on there, a word list. You know how like we have the Gematria calculator? Well, this is a, a hidden word. And you just type in the throw oxide, bam, and you'll be able to see what it means right there. Banned word list. Yeah, so, and I'm not going to uncheck, but if you uncheck that screen share mode, it'll show you what what this word actually is that we're not we're not allowed we're to see on a live stream yeah, yeah. Get in trouble. these are all banned <laughs> words that you could get in trouble on youtube for so it's really mm-hmm. cool if you're a follower of ours you can follow along in there there's a bunch of different words and you can code red that's that's yeah. one of your favorites yeah, yeah 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 and you guys know what that is we've been on lockdown forever for it hot code coffee red. that's a grand, grand theft auto inside joke well, yeah. yeah there's a bunch of them man we came up with um many different ones you know it's cool to watch it the list build and then you just kind of learn our little um lingo what we're talking about and and so it's a cool way to follow along but that's occultdeco.com okay go ahead brother I'll yeah good good call out there and then it's really hard to tell on this one but like right in the middle of this image there's this etching of this wolf's head um or it's, it's actually a boar like a wild boar with these little tusks but this was a sacrificial dagger that they found next to all these different remains. And this is a, a quote um, from this article right here about them finding this, this cannibalism in Crete. And it says that the altar was the biggest they found in Crete um, that, that was written about in these initiation rites. And the priests would display this red stuff from the birth of Zeus. And that the actual place of the cult where they found this, this dagger that's right outside Crete that at first I thought the priest came because of the pure air of the water spring, but then I learned from a geologist that it had a cross point of seismic lines. So there was actual proof that these ancient Carthaginian and Crete and Phoenician sacrifice rites were actually being performed um, on these seismic lines. And I would almost derive from that like ley lines, the fact that they might actually understand more about where they were at than science did up until very recently. Um, and then here's this, I, I just got a whole bunch, and there's this article here that goes on to talking about they found 203 bones in a heap and that they all belong to children less than 10 and certainly less than 15. 20 of the bone, and this is where they they know that it wasn't just like a burial pit where people would just take, you know, the 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 kids that had like died of natural causes it was because the bones show these fine knife marks like butcher cuts and then it said that there's also versions of this that go on much later that get attributed dionysus dionysus Um, which is the god of the lgbtq movement um and it's also bacchus dionysus and bacchus are the same entity Right, and, and that's Bacchanalia, and Bacchanalia, right here, if you see, this is where they tear apart wild animals, and they eat them raw, and they usually put the blood on their faces, and they run around town in celebration. <laughs> that sounds fun. That sounds great, dude. I mean, yeah, and they're still doing, you think this stuff stopped, you're out of your mind. 
This stuff is still carrying on today. They do these. They, they give us this watered down version of religion when they're still doing these ancient rites, you know, and doing them on like paranoid. And, and by the way, that 203, that's my new address, dude. So if something bad happens to me. You know that Jim Carrey show, The Enigma of 23 and the 203 address? I'm kind of nervous about that. When I see that <laughs> new address, I'm like, oh, great. You just got to make sure you don't get lost in it. That's the whole danger of 23 is that if you start looking into it, like the, the rabbit hole never ends. Oh, it's crazy. I've already been down that rabbit hole. It totally fascinates me. Um, my rabbit hole that I've been on lately, though, is 36. And in the Bible, it talks about these 36 people that will save the world, these 36 people, right? And dude, all my codes, if you break down my uh, numerology connected to my name, connected to my business, connected to everything in my life, it all is connected to 36, 36, 36, 36. Even my uh, literal Facebook, I try to get the, the, the at sign, Tommy Truthful 369, and it wouldn't let me. So it gave me Tommy Truthful 36. Like there's just all the synchronicity to that number, and they all I can think it. about are the 36 chambers. Yeah, well, they use it for a lot of negativity. Um, like this year is the 36 year anniversary of Harp. Why we see Maui? It's a 36 year anniversary of Hamas. That's why that's going on between you know over there, and um, 666 is the 36 triangular number, but 666 ain't evil either. It comes for the breakdown of carbon and melanin. You know, it's 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 linked to the human, but it's just all a perversion. It, even if you look into the scripture in the oldest book of Revelations found in Papyrus 115, the true number of the beast is 616, and it's connected to Nero. And then um, I think it's ritual sacrifice that equals 616. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. So you see that number over and over again. But yeah, it was from Papyrus 115. So they just take anything sacred, like the number 33, and pervert it. Anything sacred, holy, they take that and they'll try to pervert it and attach negative energy to it. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's quite comical, to tell you the truth. And guys, all links are down in the description. Right now, we got a sale going on over on my other website, truthfultv.com, where I do all my decodes. If you want to get a personal decode, um, we do them over there. And you use promo code SALES17. I was born on the 17th. Everything I do is with numbers. And um, that gets you an extra 17% off all of our stuff right now over there on truthfultv.com. And we got some amazing stuff. We got the Organite Pyramids that block this negative energy that we're being bombarded with. You can put this. I got two by my nightstand over here um, on each side where, where my head goes. Then I got two on each side of my computer, one by my Wi-Fi tower and one in the bathroom. They're $26 with shipping included. You know, you can't beat that. You ain't going to find a better deal anywhere. Um, we got the healing crystal set with real crystals and stones. You can make uh, your own necklace. It comes with a bracelet. And we have several different necklaces that are the organite um, and as well as the chakra bracelet. So th there's a ton of stuff over there, guys. This is just a few things. There's so much more. And I only um, get into stuff that I'm into. You know what I'm saying? Stuff that works for me that I use personally. That's the only stuff I promote. And remember, we are self-funded by the viewer. So people like you, when you do purchase, it's a great way to support the podcast. And we wouldn't be able to do what we do without you guys. Now, with the um, personal decodes, uh, we got some really cool things going on with that right now, too. And I do personal decodes to let you know if you are a first player character with the soul or one of these NPCs running around controlled by this quantum computer. And you can ask anyone in the comments that's got a reading from me. It's very, very detailed. Uh, it takes me a little bit to do. But usually we're booked out for several months in the head. Right now I think we're about a month and a half out. So just book your reading. You're always going to be on a waiting list. That's never going to change. But um, it's $26.00. And if you use promo code decode the matrix from now through Christmas, you get an extra 11% off 
that uh, 26 bucks. And we just cover, you know, like me, I was born January 17th. Truth Mafia's 117. We look at your Gamatria. We look at your Destiny cards. You see this 10 of Diamonds? I'm a 10 of Diamonds. J Dreams is a 4 of Diamonds. I know Jay's whole code by heart. Uh, I know Paranoid's too. Paranoid's a 3 like me, but I have the Hangman and the Empress, right? Which the Hangman's the 12th card. The Empress is the 3rd. 1 plus 2 is 3. Both of my birth cards come back to my life path number. This And when you see these NPCs, that does never lines up. Their birth cards will be um, totally different than their life path number. And they you can tell, too, because they're so bizarre when you talk to them. You know How do saying? you break it to someone when, when you find out they're an NPC? <laughs> Jay asked me that last night. I just tell them. I mean, I'm really nice about it. I just say, hey, um, you know, you, you got the code that you're – I don't call them an NPC. I just tell them that they're not a first-player character in the game of life and it's hard. I try to say it as nice as possible, but um, yeah, it sucks. I don't enjoy doing it at all. I would rather not do it, but they're paying me for a service. They want to know. So I can't lie to them. You know what I mean? Like I have to tell them the truth. So I just tell them the truth. Now, paranoid American, he has the Empress card, but he has the world card. And the three is the only number out of the one light path, the two, the three, the four, the five, all the way through nine. The three is the only life path number that has two mixtures of the cards. So it, you, if you're a three and you're a first player character, you're going to have the hangman and the empress or the world card in the empress. And the world card is the 21st card. Two plus one is three. So it still comes back to the three. Paranoid American has the world in the empress. I got the hangman and the empress. And hangmans, we we're, um, we always sacrifice ourselves for the better good. You know what I mean? And, that, and look what I do for a living. The empress, she's the creator of this reality. Now, the destiny card number 10 is the most lucky card in the deck. And it's, it's known as the good fortune card. People that have this are able to manifest money anytime they need it. Um, if they run into trouble in their life, it'll money will always appear. And that has been the story of my life, believe it or not. It's so bizarre, you know, and then, um, Jay dreams is four of, uh, diamond card says a lot about his character too. There, there's a lot of cool connections. Uh, and it has to do with about like his passive nature and just good spirit that he has, why he's that positive vibe. You know, that's all has to do with his destiny card. So it's really interesting. That link is down below in the description. You'll see book a reading and that's on truthfultv.com. Um, Jay, what, what, and, oh, and guys, don't forget to go over and join Jay's membership. He has an amazing membership. He's also starting um, a, a membership. Well, he has one on his website, but he's going to start doing a lot more content over there. Ain't you brother? Stuff on the website. Uh, yeah, so I'm working on the Fractalverse uh, webpage right now, <clears throat> and the um, the arcade is – I'm pretty much done with the arcade for now. I'll come back and add to it later, but – It looks awesome, dude. Yeah, are, are you able to show your screen and show the people what you've done with that already? I don't know if you're able to or not. The, I think the, so. The um, arcade – this is the one me and Jay is going to do together – and it's, it's pretty cool, guys. I'm super excited for it. So we're going to kind of do like a call-in show-based thing. And we'll have some stuff on YouTube still. But then we're going to do shows where you go on the website and you can chat on the website. You can leave comments. So it's just a better way to get people to support our platforms instead of YouTube because they're making billions of dollars off of us. You know what I mean? There we I go. got it all set up yeah jay's website is so cool too all right so this is the main welcome page and uh you just want to click where it says main menu right here and then you scroll down to the arcade boom sorry i'm watching the live stream and it's like behind oh snap Audio in my head, so I don't know if you can hear it. Hopefully not. 
All right. Well, anyways, this is, <laughs> is that, it. Is that audio, um is that copywritten that music? Yep. Oh, we just got flagged, I guarantee. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. dude. You I you I didn't know you wanted me to do this. So like I was oh, it's all right. Ready. Don't worry about it. I'll I'll just you know, it ain't no big deal. Go ahead, so, brother. Yeah, this is the this is the new page. It's got some video games you can play. And uh this is where we'll be doing our our live streams where you don't have to worry about code words or anything. Yeah, that'll be fun. And we could do the call in show too. Then we don't our callers, they don't gotta be cryptic. You know, they can talk um freely and that'll be that'll be really cool to um, be able to hear everybody's different perspective on things and what they think's going on in, in the world around us right now. I'm really excited to hear all that stuff. So yeah, it'll be fun, man. A lot of cool stuff planned and um, it'll definitely be fun. All Jay's links are down in the description. His link to his membership on his YouTube is down there. So if you want to join him through his YouTube membership, that's down in the description as well, as well as all links. Now, Jay, what did you think, brother, about this movie? What was your, I know you didn't like it, but as far as the symbolism goes. Well, what do you want to know exactly? Like, if you prompt me, I can go off. Okay, of I don't have there, anything to share. Like, was there movie. any connections to the plasma apocalypse uh, with the Hunger Games? Is my question. Uh, y yeah. So the uh, it's I got like um. <laughs> so much I, I've I've wanted to say so much this whole time. <laughs> like, you have no idea. Um. <laughs> You told me about a Chan Thomas connection with um, something about Colorado. And I was trying to talk about it yesterday, but I forgot what you told me about Colorado being a safe zone and the capital, something about the capital. Yeah, in the book series, the capital is in the Colorado Rockies. It's right behind Colorado Springs. And that's, that's where they, that's, that's the survivors. That's the rich district that's in charge of everybody. So I think that the reason that they're rich and in charge of everybody is because they survived the last apocalyptic cycle and all the heathens and savages are those that live outside toward the southern boundaries of Hyperborea, <clears throat> Garden of Eden, you know, the safe area or whatever. So you do you think um, the capital in the Hunger Games – What'd you say about um, Chan Thomas's book, The Safe Zone? What, where's that at in uh, Colorado? Uh, well, he said it's on the lee side of Pikes Peak. Is that close to where the capital is? Um, yeah, it is. It's exactly where the capital is, actually. Wow. And then there's that whole Phoenix symbolism connected to. Uh, the Hunger Games, like I show, which could be a representation of a nuclear symbol as well. But um, what do you think about this? I was thinking the snakes could maybe represent plasma. Do you think so? And they come through the roof, dude. You, you, you did an amazing breakdown off air when me and you were on the phone about the roof symbolism and being the open... Um, yeah, that's before I even saw the movie. It was really obvious what they were showing. <laughs> like, they're showing the domed roof, which is the firmament, and it's blown open. So I knew that the snakes came in from the hole in the roof. I mean, it could it could have made them come in from anywhere, but I just knew that they would because that's where the the fiery serpents descend from, is from God or from the sky. And those are the... Those are the fiery serpents that come down. That's why they're all multicolored like that too, because of the different um, gases that they have to pass through to get to the surface because it's just ionized gas. So it's electricity that's passing through gas. And when it goes through different pockets of gas, they'll change colors. So these will be rainbow serpents. You know what I mean? Right. Descending down or whatnot. Um, but for the most part, they're magenta when they first come down because they, they're hydrogen way up there in the in the highest parts of the atmosphere. Um, but that's how I knew they were coming in from the sky. Like it's 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 all it's all symbolic of the apocalypse. Like it's very super obvious. Like this is these are all post-apocalyptic survivors 
you know, like maybe however long after the event happened, I would guess 10 years if this is the 10th annual Hunger Games, you know what I mean? Well, it, 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 this was actually, no, this ain't after. This is actually 64 years before the first Hunger Games that we watched. So this takes place 64 years before the first one we ever seen. It, this is the rise of the president. Remember President Snow that was in the first Hunger Games, Jay? Yeah. yeah th th this is the rise of him. So this is taking place when That's he's a kid. Yeah. Oh, the, I thought the tenth, it's the tenth annual one, right? Yeah, the 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 tenth one. I thought you meant the tenth since um it started. Oh no no no! I just. I just meant like that's when the apocalypse happened. If because if if the Hunger Games commemorates the apocalyptic event, oh, obliterates everybody and throws them all into chaos and disarray. You know what I mean? Like this would be the tenth. This is how they keep track. This is a holiday, basically. The Hunger Games is it's it's Saturnalia. It's Bar, um, what was the other one you guys mentioned? Bacchanalia or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Those are the exact same thing. And there's reasons why, right? Back to I know it's 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 easy to be like, oh, they ran around covered in blood and fucking saying, you know, stole or whatever that whatever they did. It's easy to dismiss that now and say that's retarded, you know what I mean? Like, or that sounds wacko or whatever. But that's because we live under a different conditions in this world. You know what I mean? Like I would say, why did they do that? They had reasons why they did it. They weren't just psycho, cannibalistic, satanic weirdos that just decided to cover themselves in blood and, you know what I mean, do all that stuff. Those are, those are, um, we call it, those are holiday traditions that either became cartoonified over time and people lost the meaning of them or they were just dismissed and, and they stopped doing them because there was no longer a need to do those things. There's the symbolism of the cover where that's that open hole right there is where the serpents come through. That's where the serpents descend from that open yeah. hole. Yeah. I mean, look at the cover image too. You got the Phoenix attacking the snake and then like the sun behind it. Yeah. The Phoenix that's is the, the blue beam of light that shoots up and spreads its wings and attacks the, um, the serpents that come down. I mean the whole the whole symbolism in that is crazy, bro. Um, yeah, I mean I guess it could have been better, but I, me personally, guys, I enjoyed it. I know these two didn't really get into. Well, I'm, it. I'm a little bit of a, a I'm get picky on this, but my ultimate question after almost every movie is: Could this movie have been half the length and been the same movie? And this one is like yes on every box, like every single thing, <laughs> every message they got conveyed to the viewer all could have happened in an hour and a half and not two and a half hours. So that's my, my number one complaint. Um, but yeah, some, I, I remember when I was younger, I used to love like two or three hour movies. It was like, Oh man, you're getting all this extra value for your money. You know what I mean? Like I paid the same for this ticket. Why wouldn't I go to like the six hour movie versus the hour and a half one. But now when like time is, uh, you know, in essence, I find myself like, come on, like wrap this up. See, like wrap the scene up, yo. <laughs> right. No, I get it. And um, shout out to everybody on Rumble. I'm looking at the chat back here. I see you guys over here. Got some people over on Rumble. Hit that like button. Make sure you hit that like button. We appreciate y'all too um, at, on all platforms. Now, yeah, it, it was it was um it could have been better, but I I enjoyed it myself. I thought it was a decent movie. Uh, I was excited to do it because I the symbolism, of course, and I know it's going to be a major event in the year of the serpent, which again starts January twenty eighth of twenty twenty five, and you know from the release of that movie is four hundred thirty eight days, and you guys see the four thirty eight connection, so. Um, yeah, I think we'll have a, I think the year of the dragon is going to be pretty decent. It, it's supposed to be a year of prosperity, and it's going to get us to let our guard down in 2024. And then 2025 through 2032 is going to be unreal. That seven year period right there. Um, the Great Tribulation equals 225. So I think that's when it'll pop off and, and stuff's going to get nuts. Now, another movie, guys, that I checked out, which is was terrible. But there was so much symbolism in it. Was Good Burger too? And 
shout out to my dude, David from Indiana, because without him, I would have never known about this. I did a reading on him and he had the Neo code. So it makes sense that he caught all this because he sent me a bunch of screenshots. Like just, I did it when I did his decode, he's definitely not a first player character. He actually has a very rare code known as the Neo code. You don't see it a lot. And he caught like almost everything. Um, he didn't catch the fire thing. I did that, the fire truck, but, um, the laser storm, this was at the, um, roller rink and look what it says. Can you survive laser storm? And in the beginning scene, the first couple minutes, he's in a blue, all blue outfit standing out in front of his house. And he's talking about this new, uh, chemical you spray on your house and it's anti-inflammatory. So then he has this dude come in um, with a, a, a freaking, uh, what's that called? The, the fire launcher, flamethrower. And he sprays the house and it's supposed to not catch on fire, right? But it does. And right before that, they had all these fireworks in the house. So when the house catches on fire, these fireworks start shooting out. And in the movie, it looks like directed energy weapons are coming at him in the blue, but he's dodging from left to right. The They never hit him. And there's also, um, you know, remember in Hawaii, they didn't hit the anything that was blue. So you got that symbolism there. And then on the truck, when he goes out after the fire, he's talking to the guy in the um, black SUV and the fire truck's off to the distant. Now, you notice the number 44 on the fire truck right there, right? So from um, the release of this, or, or actually from the Belfour fire until Maui was exactly 44 days. And if you don't remember the Belfour fire, this took place June 25th of uh, 2023. And that's the day when they shared all the newspaper articles showing New York covered in like that orange smoke. Remember, it was the worst air quality we ever had. They showed pictures of Chicago with the freaking orange, the New York, all, like everywhere, the whole West Coast, the East Coast, all this orange guy, you could barely see anything, right? And that was right after, this is a couple of days after um, New York put up that giant sign that said, welcome to hell. That was on 6-6. So then this is like a week and a half later, um, the Belfort fire pops off. And that was exactly 44 days from that Belfort fire to Maui, the biggest fire event we've ever seen. And Harp is 44, Maui's 44, Cook is 44. And they got the 4-4 right on the truck there in this movie that has so much symbolism connected to lasers and, you know what I mean, uh, fire. There's a ton of scenes where he mentions fire, too, like out of nowhere. It just doesn't even make sense why he brings it up. So I wouldn't recommend watching it. It was really terrible. But there was a lot of symbolism in it. If you wanted to watch it just to catch that, I guess you could. Because um, it's loaded with symbolism and little Easter eggs. But at the same time, it was terrible. Honestly, I couldn't even get into it. Um, it I just used it to decode. But it, it was bad. It was really bad. And then another connection, guys. I'm working on a video right now, a three-part series, Unbreakable the movie Glass, and Split. And I also owe that to that same guy that told me about um, the new Good Burger, uh, David from Indiana. He told me to watch Split. And I had already seen Unbreakable a long time ago, but I'd never seen Split. So after I watched Split, um, I, I was amazed by the symbolism in it. I mean, it is so crazy. It's this guy that has 23 alter egos, split personalities, and then there's a 24th hidden one. And the 24th one is the devil, and it literally climbs up walls, guys. It can bend bars. His one split personality is a girl, and it has um, diabetes. His other personalities don't have diabetes, 
And then his psychologist is doing a report on it, showing that these people have unlocked some type of ability in their brain where one of their personalities actually has superhuman abilities. And the, the, the 24th alter ego, the devil character, they call him the beast, right? His split personality is so crazy. He, me and Jay was talking about this the other night. He's literally 40 pounds heavier, a couple inches taller, solid muscle. And I, like I said, he can climb up walls and shit. <laughs> he's totally crazy. He eats people. He's cannibalistic. Um, and in and, and Unbreakable, Unbreakable is a sequel to Glass. And so is Split. Split's a sequel to Glass. Unbreakable is a sequel to Glass. So then when you watch Split, you got to watch Glass. And when you watch Glass, this is where they get took to the hospital, the Raven Memorial Hospital, all that Raven symbolism, which we also seen with the fall of the House of Usher, remember? Um, and so they go to Ra uh, Raven Memorial, which Raven Memorial equals 187. They take them there to literally kill them. Because they want to kill anybody with special abilities. And in the movie Unbreakable, at four, um, actually, in Unbreakable, in the scene where his son's watching TV, he's upside down, laying on the couch watching TV upside down. The whole TV looks upside down at the time. His dad just gets in the train wreck, right? And in Unbreakable, his dad gets these superhuman abilities. Uh, he's the only survivor on the train wreck. He he's like got all these crazy abilities where he can't be hurt and and so forth. So his son's watching his dad just get in the wreck. He's he's laying upside down. He looks. You can see glances up at the clock for a split second, and the clock is on four sixteen when his dad gets in a wreck. So he jumps up, runs to the refrigerator to look what train his pops was on, and his pops was on train one seven seven. At 3.40 p.m., well, chip implant is 3.40, Nibiru is 3.40, and then the 4.16 connection, CRISPR-Cas is 4.16, human genome is 4.16, the death to America. It's all about genetic modification. Now, the interesting part is Glass released um, in 2019, right? Uh, January 18, 2019. Four years, 16 days later, was the train wreck in East Palestine, Ohio. So there's your first 416 connection. It's 416 on the clock, right? Then you got um, the movie Unbreakable. It comes out 41 weeks and six days before 9-11. There's a 416 connection again. And Unbreakable is 92, like Planet X, um, Sacrifice. There's a, a lot of connection with that as well. Pentagon is 92. We remember the Pentagon was connected to 9-11. So then we have this whole 416 connection connected to genetic modification. The super soldiers, they trauma do this trauma-based mind control to split these super soldiers into alter egos, right? And these split personalities, when you shatter their reality, you do something really harmful to them. Like they start very young with these kids and they'll have the kid grow up with, say, a best friend. Right. Then they make the kid kill his best friend or raise a dog that he really loves and then kill the dog. And they'll, they'll actually violate the child several times. And there will be a handler that comes in and saves the kid. That's his role in the programming. He always comes in, saves the child. Well, they'll do that for about a year of programming. And then this one day, the handler comes in. And instead of him saving the child, he violates the child. That shatters the kid's whole reality. And now each shattered fragment, the broken glass... Just like we see in Unbreakable on the cover, the broken glass, the movie Glass, the movie uh, Get Out has the broken glass on the cover. It splits each one of them broken fragments into programmable alters. This is trauma-based mind control. The CIA 
declassified files that talks about it in depth, right? So they're, they're programming these people and it's all part of this super soldier program where they're trying to um, train people to be assassins and all kinds of different things. They're using genetic modification to create these super soldiers. You got to look into Matt Spears, what he talked about with the super soldier program, how they were tortured and um, stuff like that. He, he was found vomiting up black goo on a couch in uh, Poland. That That's when he died. He was about to expose a black magic cult and what they were doing with children with Michael Aquino, who ran the psychological war department. And once he talked about doing that, well, guess what? He was found vomiting up black goo. Uh, they, he never got to do that, that um, interview. So... There's this whole connection to the super soldiers, the gene manipulation, genetic engineering is 416, genetic giants, the Nephilim. And then there's this other series, it's called Pantheon, and it came out September 1st of 2022. Paranoid American told me to watch it. Guys, it's phenomenal. It's all about uploading your consciousness to a computer, right? where you upload your consciousness. So it's connected to that whole immortality technology and season two, episode one, 20 seconds in they're declaring martial law and coming down the street and look at the address on the freaking mailbox four one six. And the whole thing's about uploading your consciousness to a computer genetic, you know, it's the genetic engineering code, the CRISPR nine, where we can create these super soldiers and splice their genomes. Now, the interesting thing about that is, too, um, from the release of that movie until Glass, the movie Glass, so there's a clear connection here, was 1,322 days. You got the 1322. Now, guess what 1322 is? Klaus Schwab. What is Klaus Schwab connected to? This whole agenda. This whole agenda connected to genetic modification. It also, 1322 is the artificial intelligence claiming to be the creator. And that's what they're setting up. This false god created out of artificial intelligence that will be worshipped as a god, right? Phoenix event is 1322 too. And as you see with Unbreakable, we got the 92 connection to Planet X. With um, Unbreakable, there's also... His train was at 3.40 p.m., which Nibiru is 3.40. Uh, I believe it was 340 days. Or or I got to look it up. It's it, Hold on. Let me look real quick. Let me pull up my date calculator because there's some connection there, too, to Rona. Hold on one second, guys. Let me pull this date calculator up. The code red. I can't remember the exact connection, so I got to look. Now, what day did that one come out real quick? Uh, that one was February. Let me try glass first. February 18th. Or January 18th, I mean. One. 18. 2019. Okay, so 118, 2019. Two. 11. 18, the 322nd day of the year. Of 2019. That's when the first case happened. Oh yeah. 304 days. It was 304 days. Which is 34. And 340. The 340 on the clock. That's 34 in numerology. So we have the 34 connection. The CDC released a zombie apocalypse warning. On their website. On March 4th. Remember guys? 34. And the day the whole code red situation. Went live in the United States the jabbers December 14th during the Corona eclipse in Argentina 13 years prior to that day was the movie I am legend came out, which is all about genetic modification, these super soldier zombies. So we see um, heavily ties to both of them narratives with, with these uh, movements. Now that 34 connection is is zombie zombie equals 34 too and i mean what are they trying to create the masses where they are nothing more than like controllable 
freaking zombies like the walking dead they want us to upload our consciousness to this artificial reality they're trying to create a quantum copy of our soul but i don't think it's as nefarious as we think i think this is the truth i think that we are in a drill right now and they know the world's gonna end they know about the phoenix phenomenon they know about the plasma apocalypse what people call pole shift you know, Planet X, which really it's a dimension, but that's neither here nor there. Um, this event is cyclical and they know it's going to happen. And imagine if you knew 90% of the world would perish. Well, what could you do to make them live on? You create a quantum reality and you create a quantum copy of their soul. That way, when they die here in the physical, they're reborn in this digital reality where you rule over like God. You guys are like... You know, you set up this artificial matrix that you rule over. I mean, it's it's kind of genius when you really think about it. But that's what I think they're doing. They're in mortality tech, um, all of it. In Elon Musk, Neuralink, the brain chip, all that. It's all tied to this immortality technology. Look into Agenda 2045, immortality tech, and you'll see... Uh, this is their peer-reviewed papers, their research that they've wrote on it, what their plans are, and, and what the narrative is they're pushing forward. I actually wrote a detailed blog on it on truthmafia.com. But um, yeah, th that 416 connection, I see it over and over and over again to that narrative, and I just thought it was uh, pretty interesting that I've seen it with all the movies, you know, Unbreakable, Glass and Pantheon, which uh, um, Paranoid told me to watch it, guys. It, it, it's it's really good. Did, what? How far are you in that Pantheon, Paranoid? I stopped at the end of season one, so I haven't started season two yet. Oh, you haven't? Mm -mm. Oh, it's so good, dude. Oh, I can't wait for Jay to check it out. It's really good. I'm not usually into cartoons, but that one's like an adult cartoon, and it's crazy, dude. It kind of is like you know, if you unlock your powers in this reality, we might have the abilities like them people that uploaded their consciousness. Remember, they could, they're they pretty much like superheroes. They could do anything in that reality. And I, I don't think this, this physical reality is much different than that, honestly. They're, they're kind of trying to create a um, matrix within a matrix. Right with this, this yeah. Remember that? What was that like? A Black Mirror episode where it was like the simulation within within a simulation, where like like that lady's life was a Netflix show. Yes, it's called Joan is Awful. I actually did a video on it, bro. Right, Joan is Awful. Yep, hundred percent. They want to trap us in a simulation within a simulation. They got the newest D wave, the the two thousand Q, the quantum computer plugged into CERN. It's plugged into all social media. I mean, they're, they're, they're definitely harvesting our energy and feeding it to another reality. And this ties into third strand DNA, guys. I can't dive into it too much because I'm on YouTube, but just look at, um, they want to add three strands of 22 to your 44 base pairs of DNA. When did Code Red start? November 18th, the 322nd day of the year. And three strands of 22 is 322. 22 plus 22 plus 22 is 66. Well, Black Goo 66 and the Rona. So you know what I'm saying? We know their true agenda with that. And that's the nanotechnology, the Black Goo that plugs you in. It allows them to use you kind of as a, as a, as an avatar where they can control your body from this other reality, from this other dimension. Some people think they're demons, that's controlling everything. And um, I think that's probably true, not too far off from the truth. Uh, my boy did a video on this about this uh, building that looks like a damn big shot, right? And the connection to them trying to create this quantum copy of our soul. Uh, that's up on truthmafia.com. And Richard, Richard did it, guys. You know who Richard is over on truthmafia.com for anybody that follows us. He he went missing for a while and none of us knew what happened to him. And then he did a video recently. Uh, some dude in his life was like extorting him 
and it was, it was pretty crazy. But he's back. He's safe now. If you don't know who he is, here, I'll show you real quick. Um, he's, he's phenomenal. Like, his, his work is really groundbreaking. It's this gentleman right here. Richard, I don't want to butcher his name. And his work is next level. If you like my work, you'll really love his. He has um, video 16 spiritual physical tsunami. That one's phenomenal. And Jay, you should check him out, brother, because he talks all about Nibiru. And it being this dual um, system, he, and he believes in flat earth, but he believes in this dual system. Um, the way he breaks it down is so fascinating. And like he shows all the symbolism connected to uh, the nobility and, and, and different symbols they use throughout uh, time. It, it's, it's really interesting. He does awesome slides too. His videos are so great. Richard, shout out to Richard. So yeah, you check him out, guys. That's on um, truthmafia.com right over here. This was a really good one too. The Death of Space that just dropped. Phenomenal. Gets into black magic, all kinds of stuff. We got Henry Kissinger over there. A pole ship plasma apocalypse, latest evidence. That's one Greg Reese dropped. It was pretty good. A paranoid American just dropped this one. Eric Conley on MK Ultra, Jolly West, and Disney Mind Control, and J Dreams, Stranger Things. But, you know, there's a bunch of cool stuff over here, different stuff for you guys to watch. And while I'm showing you the screen real quick, this is my other website, truthfultv.com. This is where I do all my bookings, guys. There's a video right here that walks you through the booking process. So you just check out as a guest. You don't have to have PayPal like a lot of people think. You check out as a guest and watch that video. It literally shows you how to do it. And there's the reading there. We also do dream interpretations. Um, if you're on your phone, it's going to be the menu is going to be up in the top right corner. It looks like a square with three lines going through it. And when you click on that, you'll see the shop. Click on the shop. Boom, and you'll notice all of our new stuff we have over here. Bunch of new stuff. Now, the CBD, we only ship to America. And make sure you look at the states right there, because there are certain states we don't ship CBD to. But um, the other products we ship worldwide, free shipping, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of really cool stuff. Um, these pyramids are amazing, definitely. But, yeah, um, that's all I got for today. Uh, paranoid. What, 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 let's do a little show the people what you got going on over there in your freaking um, house, what you set up. Yeah, yeah. Pop pop this video open. Yeah, so this is uh, just some of the titles. I got the pamphlets there, stickers. Tommy was telling me to, to throw this together to just show how serious this is. It's not a rinky-dink operation. This isn't drop-shipped. Uh, directly from Amazon, like my entire house is is stocked floor to ceiling with comics and stickers and toys. There's some little Hillary Clinton toys that <laughs> I haven't dropped yet. Uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot of little previews in here that a lot of products that haven't even released yet. There's a lot of Chaos Twins in there. Um, and then as it pans around, it's got like my whole selection of coloring books, comic books, pamphlets. Um, th this this section right here is all my uh, Thrill Oxide <laughs> sticker collection. There's like 20 of them. I got now like you, room now 237 you know keychains. Oh, 237, dude. That's a huge code. The gamma code is 237. We found a massive connection to 237 with Maui, the D, the dues. Uh, there's this gamma code connected to what I believe is the plasma apocalypse and the pole shift event. So what's up with this 237 code right here with your keychain? Well, this is from The Shining, the the movie The Shining, Stanley Kubrick. Oh, That's the room like that, that is at the very end is 237, and all the links to that being uh, indicative of him trying to reveal that that movie was about the moon landing. It's it's everything to do with that. Wow, bro. I never knew that connection to 237. Holy And that, those keychains are the exact same color as the red keychain in the movie. Oh my, I'm gonna have to get me one of them, dude. Yeah, all the way down to the font. 
And then, yeah, the, here's my selection. These are just the ones that I've got printed up right now. There's a couple here that uh, I haven't even released yet. But, yeah, Connect the Dots is the Chemtrails one. Mold is going to be coming out in January. All those Illuminatis at the top are all going to be coming out early next year. Black Mass Pizza is not even out yet. Uh, but, like, you could just see, like, I'm, I'm completely stocked. I've got all this. And, and anytime someone buys one of these comics from me, I'm signing it. I'm throwing in a bunch of extras. If someone gets like one of each, uh, they get a, an extra free comic. I throw all kinds of stuff in. So yeah, look at this. I got. I mean, there's there's literally fact, over a there, ton you, worth you got, of comics in here. You got to sneak peek a little um, Biden's son, you know, for a quick split second. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we, um, yeah, you can order that too. That's hilarious. That's the that's the Hunter Biden party pack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, get that for for your um, but yeah, that's pretty cool, bro. You definitely take it pretty serious over there. Um, and it's all like custom wrapping. Like I got my own uh, tissue paper. I got my own uh, reinforced tape for the packages. I put little golden seals on everything. Like we do it upright. It shows wow. up, and and you're impressed. I guarantee it. I want one of the um, uh, pillories. Can I get mine with a little? You know, I'm still working on it. Uh, I don't show you here, but I got a air press, um, an airbrush station set up. Cause I'm airbrushing like reptilian scales on her face and then adding like little, all those are going to be hand, hand painted, custom airbrushed uh, figures that I'll be dropping soon. Oh, I need that dude. You should get, I want mine with a, a frazzle tattoo on her head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious, bro. That's so funny. But yeah, man. Um, what are we going to do next week? Paranoid. What, 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 what what's well, in the works for next? We week? watched a uh, dark song, but that was a slightly that's a slightly older movie, right? Yeah, but but dark was... song was dope. But I'm I'm open, man. We still got to start making our way through all the Stranger Things, yeah, uh, before it drops in 2025. And I mean, it it seems like you know that's a year away, right? But I mean, within a month from now, we're gonna have to knock out the first what four seasons uh, well, between get, January and December. Want to st let's start getting into Stranger Things next week because they really like that episode too. So we can. I'm get down. I, I want to still do like every episode one by one. Yeah, we can get into that. And me and, me and Paranoid are working on guys that we're going to do some shorter, like 10 minute breakdowns that are going to be, um, we're going to edit stuff in. It's going to have some AI overlays to it. You'll see clips of the movie. So it'll be done, you know, done up really nice, like how I do my video edits. Uh, that go viral. The last three I put out, dude, I got one right now that's at 900,000 views, one at like 750. All them video edits I be dropping, they go crazy viral. But it's when you, I think people's attention span is so low. When you do like a long form podcast, it just doesn't get the views and traction like the shorter ones do. So, but, but I still like doing this. I like talking with you and Jay. Um, I enjoy well, I like the long form because from long form, you can always extract those little 10 second clips and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I found, um, I got a couple good clips. I'm going to take out of this one when you were doing your breakdown and I think I'm going to make a couple different short ones, um, on this, this, I tried to invite Donut, but, uh, I think he had something to do tonight and he did several back to back podcasts. He did that one with me for our members only. You can watch that up on truthmafia.com. Now the members only content, $8.88 a month. Click on the link in the description. Uh, we did a phenomenal one. Um, that was Thursday or no, Friday. And then Friday he had to go do one with Paranoid American and that chick. I want to interview her, bro. Did you? Yeah, Chaney. You Shout out Chaney. We were, dude, we were up from midnight till 5 a.m. And apparently even after I went to bed, Donut and Cheney were up talking for like another hour or two. So <laughs> now we're like, didn't go to sleep until like seven or eight in the morning. Oh my Lord. Um, yeah, I need to interview her, bro. Set that up. I like her. She's all about loose energy and her breakdown on friends was so phenomenal. That's what I need to figure out what's going on. She did a breakdown on, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Doja cat. Her demon video, how she used the Friends logo thing, but left out two dots. And she said each each dot represented a person from Friends. 
And she thinks, I forget why she said she thought she left him out, but that's why I want to ask her, like, why is that represent Matthew Perry that he was going to die? And who's the other one? Is there another person from friends that died? Maybe we could do like a special friends episode or something. Break down like the, the craziest episodes of friends. I would do. Yeah, I'm down to do that. Friends. That would be a fun episode too. But um, yeah, we'll do, we'll do stranger things next week. Does anybody got any questions in the, in the comments for me, paranoid or brother Jay? Jay, Jay, you seem kind of uh, low energy this one you, today. I do. Yeah, a little bit. You're well, really up and happy and stuff. Uh, I just, I guess I am a little low energy just because you know I I already did my whole live stream, and oh. then I thought we were starting at seven eleven, but then we didn't start for like an hour, and I've been sitting here the whole time and like. <laughs> I, I probably do have a little less energy than when we first started, I suppose. Yeah, you gotta well, know it, it's always like an ad, like you start, but then there's like the the prep. Not, not only that, but like all the cool stuff you told us before the live stream, and so like I don't have, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I I don't know how to react. It's weird for me, like because I just I, I hear two presentations basically. Like you give us the presentation before. And then I'm just kind of quiet. I don't really know when to chime in and stuff. So it's, we just, always do it's that, just different though. for me. Yeah, we I always prep. So every time we do that, it's just good to prep. That way when you're doing your thing, you know the flow of it. So it goes good. But hey, it happens. I've been off on episodes so many times, dude. Where I, I, mean, just, I have a lot to say. It's just I don't, I don't always know when to chime in. And I try to be really respectful to like when you guys are talking and stuff. So like, uh, I have a lot to say. It's just, you know, if, if you ask me directly, I'll have all kinds of st stuff to say about it or whatever. But if you guys keep going and, and talking or whatever, then I'll just be quiet and just let you talk. You know what I mean? We could pass a rain stick around. Like, yeah. Oh. Well, I did ask him. I asked him, what did you feel on the breakdown? You, you got, I mean, I guess you gave your opinion though. It wasn't one you were really into either. So, you know, that happens. I, there's some movies I watch and I'm like, oh. Um, this was definitely my least favorite Hunger Games movie out of all the different movies. I think I liked all of them better than this one. Oh, yeah, me too. I mean, it wasn't the best. But the the, the real story started after the Hunger Games. It's like not even about that. It, it, it starts in in the out like the hour after it where he's in the woods and, you know, he's really getting ready to pretty much kill that girl, Lucy Gray, because um, she was the last – he would – he, she was the last thing that was standing in his way to get back to the Capitol because he ended up killing the mayor's daughter because she walked back there when his friend was trying to help um, smuggle guns to the rebels. And she was like, I'm telling. She's the one that got Lucy sent to the Hunger Games in the first place. So, you know, he shot her with the shotgun. And um, Lucy had put that gun in, in the floor board of that cabin they were in and she's like well now the only thing standing in your way you got the gun is me and she kind of looks at him and she's like i'm gonna go outside because i think she felt he was gonna kill her and she went outside and dips out and then um he goes out looking for her, lucy where are you so he starts to walk in the woods and when he walks in the woods he sees her shirt on the ground he goes to pick it up and that's where the snake bit him you know and he's like is this snake poisonous he starts screaming at Lucy and he sees her run through the, the tree line and he starts shooting at her with the AK. But he, what's weird too is he never, the snake ends up not being poisonous. So he survives. He goes back to the doctor at the end and he goes back to the capital. He gets back there, whatever. He gets his best friend killed, sacrifices him uh, pretty much, you know, was going to kill Lucy uh, spoiler alert. And when he gets back to the capital, the doctor that created the snakes, the lady with the one blue eye, the one normal, she says, now what do you think the Hunger Games represent? He said, we need the Hunger Games to keep P. So now he knows what it's for to keep people in line. <laughs> and, then, you know, he's like, we like need the purge. Them. Yeah, it's like the purge. So he realizes what they need him for. And that's where he goes under her wing. And she kind of raises him up to where he becomes 
the presidents. No, but they don't show us what happened to Lucy Gray after that. That part pissed me off, dude. I'm like, what happened to her? She became Snow White, or she tried to, and then she got fired. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that, that she was, she, she was going to be Snow White, but then they canceled her. Oh, for real? Yeah. In real life? Mm hmm. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. They, 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 they didn't cancel her. There was, was like, there was just so much backlash, right? That they like, had really bad. To. Why? For what? What was the backlash for? It was, it was, I think the appropriate word is super woke. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there were no dwarves. They're, I don't know what the fuck they were. They were not dwarves. And, She's not trying to like look for the prince or anything. They changed it and made her all empowered woman power and weird and stuff. And they were very but why did they about everything. Her? That's what I'm asking. Like, why? Did Cause she's they... really outspoken about it and oh, she won't shut up about it. And she's making yeah, a big yeah. deal about all of it. And she's really defending it, which is causing a stir kind of like the, you know, the, um, recent Bud Light mascot stir type right, stuff. Right. Oh, I, I salute her for that then. That makes me like her more. You know I mean? <laughs> makes me like her more. I already was uh, attracted to her. I know a lot of people think um, they're not particularly what they portray to be in Hollyweird as far as um, certain um, sexuality goes. But I was trying to see if I could tell with her, and I couldn't. So like I told Paranoid, if that is true, they did a good job. You know, <laughs> whoever her doctor was, they did a good job because I thought I thought she was um, I thought she's pretty and she's a good singer. Definitely a good singer. I'd never seen her before either until this freaking whole episode or this whole movie. But I had no clue who she was, dude. But um, yeah, that, that's pretty much our take. And we love y'all. All links are down in the description. Um, we will see you in a couple of days. Make sure you go check out my new videos, guys. If you're on Facebook, it's tr the at sign is Truth Mafia Podcast. I put up a bunch of new videos. Um, and if you're on Instagram, it's Tommy Truthful TV. That's my big one. So I love y'all. You guys have an amazing day. Thanks for coming and chilling out with us. We're out of here. Love you guys. Did it end? No, it's still going.